The city of Santa Ana traces its origins to the 1760s. By the 1930s, the population was over 30,000 and it had become a railroad destination and a center for commercial, financial, and manufacturing businesses. Today, there are more than 300,000 people in Santa Ana, and 21.5% of them live below the federal poverty line. This is where Assistance League of Santa Ana has established a legacy. I've been a member of Assistance League of Santa Ana since 1947, and it was such an impressive organization to me because it was one of the first to directly serve individuals in the community and to give assistance where assistance was needed. I grew up in Santa Ana. I went to Santa Ana schools. I went to Santa Ana College. I live in Santa Ana. I am very pro Santa Ana. And if you want to help Santa Ana, this is the place. Assistance League Santa Ana has been around for 80 years. We were pretty much the pioneer of philanthropy in Santa Ana. And in those 80 years, the community has changed, technology has changed, people have changed, the time we have to volunteer has changed. And I really like Assistance League, the way that we've been able to change along with the times. The narrative begins over 80 years ago, as Mrs. James Irvine watched, with great interest, a volunteer group in Los Angeles founded by Ann Hancock Banning called Assistance League of Southern California. In 1935, she inspired her bridge-playing friends to do something to promote the welfare of Santa Ana's less fortunate. The seed was planted, and in 1938, Mrs. Irvine's organization received its charter. I never will forget the day that I first met Mrs. James Irvine. Catherine. I was working at thrift shop and in sailed this tall, statuesque lady. And I mean, she came in like a whirlwind and she always wore huge, big hats. And it's just as amazing what Mrs. Irvine did to start this organization of wonderful women. Great changes came in the 40s. The word had spread of the successes they'd had with improving the quality of life in their community, and uh, different women in the other towns uh, came to Mrs. Irvine and said, we'd like to be involved. As these neighboring cities joined Santa Ana in their good works, the group became known as Assistance League of Orange County, and membership totaled over 400 women. And in 1939, the first thrift shop opened in the historic Ramona building. With more needs to be served and increased demands on their treasury, League introduced the first Orange County Horse Show held in the Santa Ana Bowl. Then it became, by 1940, the Fair and Horse Show, which was a huge, huge event. And that horse show ended when the war came. This Fair and Horse Show, started by Santa Ana's Assistance League, became the annual Orange County Fair. With the onset of World War II, League members worked with the Red Cross and the Armed Services at the Santa Ana Air Base, rolling bandages, knitting and sewing, arranging surgical dressings, driving the motor pool, learning first aid, and serving as hostesses at USO parties. At the end of the war, the base closed and these projects stopped, but the League's philanthropy continued. Members raised funds for Orange County flood relief, screened school children for cerebral palsy, and provided emergency aid, later known as homemaker service, to the families in Santa Ana. Emergency aid was a program where we gave emergency aid to people that came in and needed food, housing, money for things, and we were able to do that at that time one-on-one. -on -one. We, we did individual needs. We used to go into the community when that was, it was safe to do that in Santa Ana. And Jeannie Wahlberg and I used to work together and go into, into people's homes and take them things, and it was whatever they needed. Not, it wasn't a particular thing. In the late 40s, the thrift shop was moved into a storefront building, and it was a big move because these women had never managed money. They'd never had a checkbook. Uh, the husband handled all the finances. And for these ladies to rent this building and have the obligation of funding it was a big move. One of the members, Mrs. Charles Plum, a large home, they offered the League the opportunity to buy the dining room, the living room, and one bedroom. 
This meant monumental debt. Ten thousand dollars in those days was quite a bit of money. But these women went to the bank and got their first loan and paid it off. This property became the foundation for League's present location on First Street. The saddest thing that happened in the 50s was we lost our founder, organizer, and constant supporter, Mrs. James Irvine. Catherine Irvine and her friends were Santa Ana's benevolent pioneers and remarkable women. And there were to be more remarkable women and projects to come. In the late 60s, the First Street property was developed further with new buildings, one for the toy loan program and another to accommodate a larger thrift shop. In 1979, League developed the Catherine Irvine Day School. I was chairman of the daycare center, spent a lot of time thinking and pondering that. And my committee, we spent months driving to all daycare centers in Southern California. We'd talk to the directors, we'd go to our two SUVs, the off we'd go. So we got the best of all the daycare centers by the time we finally put this together. So the completion of the daycare center took approximately two years and we had a very grand opening, you know, the mayor, and it was just a very exciting time. We were responsible for funding it for managing it. We had a professional staff, but we were the overseers. It was a very progressive daycare. It was about the children learning and having experiences. League no longer runs the daycare center, but leases and maintains the building. With the realization that more women were entering the workforce, the Majeska Auxiliary was established. I was approached by members of League and said, you know, maybe we need a working woman's auxiliary. We got together, several of us were invited to start. We did all the due diligence and in 81, we had a working woman's auxiliary and I was very honored to be that first chairman. Right at the time that we were entering a new century, which sounded like a very big deal. And it was 1999, 2000. And we were very excited because we really thought we were going to bridge the future. And bridge the future they did. While no longer the sole philanthropic organization in Santa Ana, League continues to serve the needs of Santa Ana's working poor, their children, and the elderly. League's programs and projects begun decades ago are relevant and matchless today. In 1978, I was chairman of the Dental Center Project, and that started with a $25,000 generous donation. And I can remember coming on weekends with my little children and vacuuming the center before it opened, and I worked with the dentist a lot then. And the dental clinic I thought was fabulous when it started, a, an extremely worthwhile thing to, for this area to be able to have children have their teeth checked and work done on them. That is the most underfunded, uh, the most needed service that our communities are in need of and are the most expensive if you try and go and get that out of pocket somewhere. And if you're uninsured, there simply isn't a resource. And the dental center was a necessity to treat the children for their future health. The national organization wanted us to be identified with what we did. So that is when we uh, put in Operation School Bill. We clothe uh, with school uniforms over 2,000 kids. They get backpacks, they get a, a hygiene kit, they get shoes, they get socks, underwear. The joy on the children's faces when they get a backpack with items for their school that they may never, never have. And they get shoes. Usually they pass me down shoes and pass me down clothes. They're so excited. You know, some of them may not have had new clothes very often. And they come home just carrying them like they're little gifts of some kind. The thrift shop is a wonderful program, raising money for Assistance League, but also it gives a lot of people in this vicinity an ability to buy some nice clothes. We have our regular customers, but we have people who come from all over. We have a woman who used to live in Riverside, and every year she would come with her daughter to outfit her for school. And they have moved to Arizona, and she still comes back. People come in and get things that they, they needed to have their life be more normal, and we were able to provide them. I was there one day, and this girl came in, and she was anxious to find something so that she could go for a job interview where she'd look professional and sh sharper. And uh, she found this beautiful suit, beautiful suit, which fit her perfectly. There were tears. And this possibly was a little step for her getting a good job. In 1964, 
40 teenage girls became the first members of the Essestines Auxiliary. I feel very lucky to have been in the first graduating class to have gone all the way through Assistines. I fell in love with the Assistine program because I saw my kids start to realize the importance of giving back. When my son got his first job, he put down working in the thrift store as a job reference. He had done customer service, he had worked a cash register, so not only did it give them practical life skills, it also made him realize that some people have to do their shopping in the thrift store. And it made my kids open up their eyes to the fact that this world is full of all sorts of people and everybody is worthy. My most rewarding experience with the Sistines was um, working with the girls themselves and we got to be really close. What we learned here to give back is still going on with our children and our grandchildren. They're in Sistines, which is um, quite a heritage. The scholarship is really a wonderful thing because I can see the results. You meet so many interesting young students that you know they're going to go someplace. We partnership with the Career Technical Education Department in Santa Ana Schools and they help us find our students. This is the place that gave me a scholarship earlier on and so now that I'm in a position to be able to give back, we uh, partnered with the Assistance League with the dental facilities. We also run uh, medical and dental and behavioral health services and so programs like the Assistance League because they focus on children uh, are essential. I was a recipient of, of their scholarship. It was enough money to pay for my books, to help with transportation. Along with financial aid, I was able to continue my education. They have their gift of giving event every December where they sponsor about uh, 40 families, 40, 50 families in our community. These are usually low-income families, maybe some migrant workers, and I play Santa Claus every year. It's my way of giving back. I've been Mrs. Santa Claus for I don't know how many years. I've collected about a thousand books every year as Mrs. Santa and then give them four or five to every child that comes through for our gift of giving. They'll probably always think of me as Mrs. Santa Claus, whether I want them to or not. It is the most wonderful experience because the parents come up to you or the people come up to you and say thank you so much because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have Christmas. We have an outreach program, so we help other community services. Uh, we'll have about four programs that we'll help support during the year. The outreach committee has done some wonderful projects over the last few years. One thing that we've done is provide gardening tools to an organization that goes into homes that have fruit trees and, and such in their backyard, not enough time to harvest them. And the harvesters go in and they glean all of those trees and then they put that food to the food bank, which ultimately goes to the people in the community who need fresh fruits and vegetables. Assistance League provided laundry soap and laundry products for an organization here in Santa Ana that does outreach to the homeless by washing their clothes once a month. And it was wonderful to know that just our little donations of Tide and Downy and Bounce could make a difference and give some dignity to some people who are really down and out right here in our own backyard. Through the years, the League's fundraising events were grand social affairs. From the horse shows, to fashion shows, to sleigh bell suppers, Christmas home tours, the world's largest cocktail party to open Fashion Island, garden tours, and golf classics. They were not only first class productions, but also great fun, creating solidarity and friendship among members. I think my most memorable experiences with League were some of the parties that we had actually. Of course they were fundraisers, but they were really fun as well as raising funds. We had so many dances, so many parties, so many sleigh bell suppers they called. And one of our sleigh bell suppers was held in a hotel. And I had a ball gown on and coming home that night in the car, my husband was ill, did not join me there. And I had a flat tire in a real sad part of Santa Ana went off the road and went by to a movie theater of some sort and uh, there was no pay phone, no cell phones and a group of young men, this was at midnight, stopped and here I am in my ball gown and I was very frightened and they got out of the car and changed my tire and they said, why do you look like you do? And I said, Assistance League of Santa Ana and they said, oh, we know all about Assistance League, we know all about the thrift shop, we know all about the dental center and that was very, 
very memorable to me. Almost every time I come to the thrift shop to work, something unusual and funny happens. We've had a person living on top of the thrift shop on the roof, and um, I asked him to come down, and he told me he was praying, and he really didn't want to come down, but he got down before the police got here. So that's probably one of my more outstanding memories. With a track record of giving that is beyond reproach and a genuine legacy of love towards the people of Santa Ana, Assistance League is primed to meet the needs of our diverse and ever-growing community. We see a lot of people that are homeless, but we don't see the working poor as just people driving on the freeway or driving on a street through our community. Being here in the Assistance League, I've really been able to see how many people are really just living day to day. If there's a need in the community, people are hopefully telling Assistance League and then Assistance League is going to figure out the best way to meet those needs. I'd like to see Assistance League be valued in the community and the efforts that they put into it and how it can better the lives of the people that come and take advantage of our programs. It's a group of people that really care about other people. To those who much has been given, much will be expected and I think we've all tried in some way or another to give back. It wasn't just for the social aspect of it, it was the fact that we were doing something meaningful. League to me means friendship, charity, helping others, and most of all, love. In this world of volunteers, there are always ups, there are always downs. There are many smiles and a few sad frowns. But all things considered, I must truly confess that knowing you has been the best. As for me, this year I'll forever treasure, cause from June through May, you've been a pleasure. With meetings and events and decisions all year, you've always come through and proven yourself dear. For more information, please visit assistanceleague.org slash Santa Anna.